1916, when the French were being bombarded at the furnace, they sought help from their allies in hopes that they could help divert German forces away from Verdun. Russia took up the call and devised to launch an offensive at Vilna Narok on March 18, 1916. Sadly, it came to a halt and was deemed unsuccessful for the Russians. Later that spring, the Russians would answer another call to help, hoping that this time, this new offensive, they would do better. That plan? The Brusilov Offensive. Hello everyone and welcome to another Battlefield episode of The Real History Of, an episodic web series where I take a look at the real figures and events that inspired the settings of our favorite video games. I'm your host Christopher, the video game historian, and on this episode, I'm going to take a look at the real history of the Brusilov Offensive. In the spring of 1916, the Austro-Hungarians attacked Italy at Trentino. Like with the French, the Italians asked for assistance from the Allies to help divert the Austrian forces away. Like with Verdun, the Russians answered the call in hopes that they could regain their prestige and boost their soldiers' morale. In April, the plans were discussed on what Russia should do with General Evert, commander of the Western Army Group, and General Korobkin, commander of the Northern Army Group, and the newly appointed General Alexei Brusilov, commander of the Southwestern Army Group, coming together to debate whether a defensive or an offensive maneuver was the best strategy. While Evert and Korobkin were in favor and proposed defensive strategies, Brusilov proposed an offensive one. He argued that an offensive would help divert the Germans from the Somme where they were battling the British as well as the Austrians at Isonzo, and that if each of the generals had their own front during the attack, then the German forces would be split, putting them at a major disadvantage. Eventually, Brusilov was given the go-ahead for his offensive, and it was discussed that same April. The plan was to be relatively simple. It was to be a surprise offensive using four armies that stretched across the 200-mile front to the southwest in Galicia. Each general had his own sector and drew up their own plans of attacks. This way, the Germans would be thrown off from which sector the main attack was coming from. Truce was, however, that there was no one main attack, but rather a widely dispersed one coming from all four armies. Being a surprise offensive, there was to be no preliminary artillery, nor were there to be reserves to call upon, as the amassing of the reserve troops would give away the element of surprise. The attack was to be all or nothing. Aerial photography and maps drawn up by Brusilov aided the generals in knowing where the Austrian lines and fortifications were. The photography revealed that the Austrians had managed to create three deep trenches that were 50 to 60 feet away from each other and heavily defended with machine gun nests. This helped the Russians know where they were at and prior to the attack managed to get their own front lines just 100 yards away from their enemies. On June 4th, the offensive was launched. The attack took the Austrians by surprise, with Russian artillery being precise and on target. The main targets the Russians were after were the capture of Kovol and Lusk. In just four days, Lusk was captured, and three of the four armies managed to break through the Austrian lines, resulting in their full retreat. Everything seemed to be going according to plan until Brusilov was informed that General Evert failed to attack and would not be ready to until June 18th. This resulted in the Russians losing their chance to capture Kovol, as well as General Ludendorff sending reinforcements to the Austrian army. By the time Evert's army was ready, the Germans were well on their way to reinforce their allies. Evert ultimately never attacked, as despite Brusilov's opposition, his forces were transferred to assist Brusilov in the south by Russian HQ. Due to the Germans' advanced rail system, they were able to divert their forces south and engage Brusilov's army faster than Evert's reinforcements could get there. With Evert's army failing to attack and being the main push to Brusilov's diversion, the offensive came to a screeching halt on August 10th, with Russia losing half a million men in casualties. Morale among the Russians plummeted and riots began to break out at home over resources being diverted to the military, which resulted in famine among the Russian people. Shortly afterwards, Russia would be forced to drop out of the war to deal with their homegrown revolution in February 1917. While the Brusilov offensive overall was a failure for the Russians, it did have some success for the Allies. German and Austrian forces were forced to divert away from the Western Front, letting pressure up on the British, French, and Italian armies, especially at the Somme, Verdun, and Isonzo. 
The Austrian army was weakened to a point that it wasn't considered a major power in the war anymore, though Caporetto would say otherwise to the Italians. The offensive ultimately failed to accomplish what it had set out to do, and as a result, Russia was forced to deal with political instability at home. That's all for this week's episode. Hopefully you all enjoyed it, and if so, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and leave your comments down below. Don't forget to follow me on social media with Twitter and Facebook, and if you'd like to play with or against me and others considered the best of the worst players in Battlefield 1, then join the Forum Feelers Platoon on Xbox One, PS4, and PC, as well as follow them on Twitter at, at Forum Feelers. You're not worse, just late. See you on the battlefield.